Hello, I'm Bill Peek. I want to take just a minute to tell you what we're going to be doing and give some objectives. Now, this is going to be Doc Knowles and I approach to Ford's direct diesel power stroke diagnosis and repair. We're going to try to show you how to use scan data to improve your repair efficiency. Now, we all know that the power stroke requires some care and feeding and it is sensitive to neglect in some areas. We also want your feedback because Doc and I developed these programs in conjunction with technicians. Much of this program is developed by us going out and teaching classes and working with technicians in the field on their vehicles. If you have some feedback that should be shared so that everyone can do a better job, please send an email to me at mpcbill at gmail.com or to docknall at docknall at gmail.com. Now you can also get on Doc's website at docknall.com. We welcome your feedback. We want to hear from you. We're in this to help you become more effective, but we'll try our best to give you help. Now, one of the things that people like to talk about is how bad the 6.0 is. Many technicians have found it frustrating to work on the 6.0. Here's a quote from one of the guys we worked with. He said that ever since the 6.0 was first introduced, it has been a monster to repair, the training was less than adequate, and is by far the most complicated and technical migraine waiting to happen. And after working on a 6.0 power stroke for too long, you'll need to be sent to the 6.0 funny farm for recovery where they chain you up to keep you from doing bodily harm. We think we can help you do a little better than that. Take a look and see what we're talking about. Let's talk about how we're going to try to accomplish in the course of this program. First, we've got to talk a little bit about compression ignition very quickly just to give you a review. Then we're going to talk about diesel fuel itself because that's a subject we've got to cover and some of the issues with it. And we're going to give you an overview of how power stroke systems work, each one individually. Then we're going to go into the fuel system operation for each of the different versions, an injector operation for each of the different versions, along with a high-pressure oil system for the hydraulically actuated injectors. And we're going to talk about the air management and turbocharging operation. We're going to talk about glow plugs and tips and common problems. All through this, we're going to show you how to reference scan data to help improve your diagnostic efficiency. That's the strength of what Doc and I bring to this class. We're going to talk about some biofuel issues and some of the problems can happen if they're not properly handled and taken care of and some additives that will help with some of the biodiesel issues. We are welcome your feedback on anything you find in that area. We aren't going to cover the 7.3 liter. It was the good one. It's been around for a long time. That's the diesel that builds Ford's reputation. We're going to talk about the 6.0. It's referred to by technicians as the bad, and the 6.4 is referred to as the ugly because it's got so many things bolted onto it. Really shows you why you want to use scan data when you look at that picture. One of the problems with diesels is one technician told us we are in the stage of diesels where cars were in 1973, where the big changes were made to improve emissions. Some of the things we've been doing, we've worked with closer tolerances and specs and cleaner fuels, getting out some of the, the material like sulfur, trying to get a more efficient, clean combustion process. We're going to use diesel oxidizing catalysts, DOCs. Doc is so pleased they finally named something after him on a vehicle. These diesel oxidizing catalysts are going to help us with particulates, and we're going to add particulate filters. We want lower emissions and get rid of the soot, the black smoke, the particulates, whatever you want to call it. Then the final step is after treatment. When we can't clean the engine up enough, do it after combustion. That's predominantly done to reduce oxides of nitrogen. We'll talk about oxides of nitrogen and why they form as we go through this real quickly. But to give you a view of why things are where they are, look at the gray box in 1994. Off the scale, right at the top, much higher NOx, 20% higher, 10 times higher particulate matter than we have now. That little green square in the bottom left corner, that little teeny thing, that's 2010 emissions. 
what's happening is we're getting the first stages of emission control to improve the up the emissions of diesels it's painful now that's not to make excuses for anyone they should not build a product that doesn't work right but when you're making this big a change on something as complicated as a diesel engine occasionally you're going to make mistakes now we've got to say one thing about safety before we go there's danger of slipping there's hot surfaces there's dangers of high pressure injuring you so to avoid injury take the time to read understand and follow the warning decals on the value of what's displayed in the service manuals compression ignition we're going to be burning fuel under high compression these are the classified as compression ignition engines meaning they don't require spark to ignite the fuel they use high compression 400 to 450 pounds per square inch in the cylinder which superheats the air as it's drawn into the cylinder then we're going to inject the fuel at just the right time to give us the right mixture of air and ignite it to give us maximum power the power is created by hot expanding gases we get a lot of expansion in the diesel because we get a lot of heat heat is one of the things that cause oxides of nitrogen so we have to be aware that the very efficiency that makes the diesel so good is one of the things that causes problems the heat generated some of this hot exhaust gas is directed to the turbocharger we take this high volume energy we're going to run it through this turbine which is going to compress the air on our intake so we can pack more air into the cylinder if we have more air we can add extra fuel the result being we wind up with increased power now we've got to talk about fuel quality and condition at some point it'll be very brief but without a spark to start ignition the fuel quality and condition of the fuel becomes very important because it's the quality and the characteristics of the fuel that's going to produce the combustion cetane is one of the things we're going to look at it ignites the fuel without a spark and the proper cetane levels are very important the cetane number is a measure of the ignition quality of fuel it affects combustion roughness it'll give you poor ignition quality if it's too low it'll give you long ignition delay and hard starting if it's too low it'll give you abnormal combustion if it's too low it'll give you abnormally high compression pressures because it waits in this delay until the pressure gets higher before it gives you combustion and it has can give you some very uneven thrust on the piston the cylinder increasing wear so wear can be a problem it's just because you have the wrong cetane number in louder engine knock and excessive spark knock smoke at cold startup a lot of things go wrong with the wrong cetane black smoke is higher than normal too much particulates now Ford says if you want to improve the cetane rating use their treatment and we have people who say that Ford works very good great use it one of the fleets we work with did a long experiment and found diesel mechanic in a bottle worked well for them it helped reduce some of the problems they were having with gel because this keeps it from gelling and clouding up it's approved by the EPA and they said it reduced the carbon they were getting in their system it eliminated some of the bacteria and sludge they were getting because they were having to use biofuels we uh, recommend anything people give us proof that it works they showed us good proof we round, roundly recommend this there are other systems this is one way to improve cetane pick the system go test and see what's going on find the one that works best for you test for a whole fleet of trucks this one works better than the other products for their particular problems sludge and too much carbon in the EGR too much carbon in the turbo that's what they were looking to fix give us your recommendation now the owner of this Ford credits Ford Cetane booster with helping his truck reach 273,000 miles have clean fuel and be running well he also maintains it well so fuel quality and conditions are important considerations fuel accumulates water in the fuel system as the hot fuels return to the fuel tank it condenses the water vapors when we have a little bit of water we get orga organic contamination the water becomes a breeding ground for uh, slime and organic material this is a real problem 
with biofuels. We get waxing or gels at temperatures as they get too cold. And because of the close tolerances of the fuel system, meaning four or five micron filters, this gel can cause us to get a no start. Now, the cloud point is defined by ASTM D2500 at a temperature at which the wax crystals first appear in the fuel and it can be identified by the cloudy conditions you're looking at here. You can see the haze. The gel point is where we start gelling the wax out, which can become very thick and coat the filters and cause us problems. We might get enough fuel through the filters to allow the engines to idle, but not enough to accelerate. Common complaint we heard. There are two common ways to overcome this. One is to use a diesel additive. The other is a good fuel heater. We'll give you some solution to each of them. Let's take a minute to talk about fuel quality. Here's five samples. Sample one was taken as a good clean fuel. We're looking at the setup in the bottom. Two, you can see the water settling out in the bottom. That slightly different color, the tan in the bottom is water. Here's sand, dust, and contamination in the bottom of three. This is off-road fuel, agricultural fuel. It may not meet our sulfur requirements. And this is biofuel. It's got algae and sludge. If it gets old, we get microbial activity and turns it black. You have to have an additive if you have this problem. There's no other solution other than to quit using biofuels. Here's the summary of the important things about fuel you should be looking for. Use this list to work with your fuel supplier to see what's needed. Now, if you decide you need some type of additive, this is what you should be looking for. Talk with your additive people to see which one of these it hits with. Try to look for a solution that matches something that's causing your problem. Smoke suppressants is a good example. Smoke suppressants are the things that reduce the exhaust smoke. Well, that sounds simple enough. Let me put that another way. This is also something that reduces the smoke or soot or carbon, whatever you want to call it, that accumulates in your EGR and in your turbochargers. So pay attention to this stuff. Some of the things like smoke suppressant may be more important than you think they are. And here's our labeling. If we have a 2007, we've got to use ultra-low sulfur. Non-highway off-use, the red fuel, it may exceed 500 parts per million sulfur. It's not regulated. That can cause real problems or after treatment in the exhaust or other systems. It may reduce their effectiveness. And then at the bottom, we may have 20% bio and newer fuel. It depends on what model year. We won't go into that. You can but biofuel cannot sit around too long unless you put some kind of additive in to prevent the growth of algae bacteria. So, summation. Diesel engines use about 70% of the fuel a gasoline engine would use for the same power in operation. It reduces per mile emissions, which is important. Even though, without emission controls, diesels provide automatic benefit for HCCO, it does not do so for everything. Diesel fuel has low vol volatility, which eliminates evaporative emissions. We don't have to have the evaporative emission systems they have on cars. The primary concern for diesels are NOx and particulate matter, soot, carbon, smoke, whatever you want to call it. Then the low sulfur fuel we're talking about, it has to have a maximum 500 parts per million. Ultra low has to be 1,200. That's effective as of 91 2006. 6 may use low, or low sulfur. Go to the specific vehicle for recommendations. 2008 requires ultra low fuel all vehicles. One of the things you have to keep in mind is that fuel and water don't mix. One of the things we're going to do is separate out the water. This is an important operation. This is the first thing we're going to do in our filtering system is separate the water from the fuel. But if you have biofuels and you have water in the tank, you have major problems. You must keep the water down. You're going to have to use something to keep from growing uh, bacteria and algae if you're using biofuel and you have any accumulation of water.